<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I couldn't resist. I had to find some random intro of, from the old days to throw in. So anyway, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I mentioned to a handful of friends on Discord and even posted on Twitter that uh, I played in my first chess tournament since high school 2007. Uh, this past weekend, uh, July 6th, um, and I played, there, were, there was a five-round tournament, uh, first time I played in years and years and years, and uh, a lot of people were like, hey man, just, you know, let us know how it goes. I was like, don't worry, I'll, I'll make videos because I obviously, I want to review these games myself. Um, I have not looked at them yet myself. Um, I put the moves in here, but I don't have engines or anything on it just yet. Um, so what my goal is, what I would like to do, how I, I, would, I would like these to go, is I'm going to go through my moves. I'm going to talk about sort of like why I was thinking it, um, what I'm looking at, uh, and sort of, you know, this and that. Um, that gives you, as a viewer, a potential opportunity to like pause the video each move and think about, you know, would you do something different? What do you see? Um, am I crazy? How crazy am I not? Am I crazy? Of course I'm crazy. You know, how bad is my move and all that sort of jazz. Um, if you want to, or just, you know, kind of listen and all that. Uh, once we go through the games, then we'll go back, we'll turn on engine, and we'll get a, to take a look at, you know, were any of my thoughts correct? You know, what were the big things that I missed? How were things supposed to have gone? You know, this and that. Um, see if any of the good moves I made were actually good, or if it was just blunders on the other guy's part, etc., etc., etc. So that's kind of my hope and my thought. Uh, I want to go through the games again. And then I want the computer to sort of teach me and, I, you know, I can help learn from what I did. Um, so as I said, uh, there were five games. Um, I'll post each one probably as a separate video because I know I have a tendency to talk too much and there's no way I'm going to put five games in one video. Um, I don't have recording software anymore, so this is all just going to be one live, not live, but, you know, one, one full cut. And uh, let's just kind of see how it goes and uh, go from there. So this first game, I am white. I'm always going to put myself on the, on the bottom. It's just a better point of view uh, and go from there. So I open with E4 as I always do. Oh, I wish I could get the text. It'd be too small if I got this text on the other side over. But anyway, um, and then he went with, oops, wrong. There we go. And he goes D6, which I, is, is that the Slav? Is he trying to go out here? I don't think I've seen that in like 10, 15 years. Um, you know, obviously I'm used to this guy, I'm used to this guy, used to this guy, even freaking Knight coming out. And even, hell, even that, all all of those five are, are normal shit and so is Karo Khan. Like, all six of those are moves that I see relatively frequently enough. Uh, that's pretty rare. I don't really see either one of those very often, but either way, um, I don't know what defense this setup tries to do or tries to play. I am wholly unfamiliar with it. And I figure if I just try and play like standard boring little moves, he's gonna be in much more familiar territory than I am. He's gonna be like, oh yeah, he's just doing the standard basic moves. I'm gonna win. Um, whereas I'll be just, you know, whatever. So I'm, I'm already out of prep on move two because I'm not gonna just play random stuff. I mean, I'm sure like normally I try and play the Vienna as we'll see later in future videos. I play the Vienna twice. Um, so like, sure, maybe I could try and get it and maybe try and transpose into something I'm more familiar with, you know, and then, you know, try to do like a delayed Vienna Gambit. But if he doesn't transpose into exactly what I'm familiar with, then it's just going to be a big advantage for him. Um, and I figure he's probably not used to seeing B3. Um, I was watching a video of mine, an old chess video of mine from eight years ago, where I started with knight, and then I went b3, and basically after that I got all my pieces in like standard sort of positions where I still put them. Um, you know, bishop here, here, depending on his knight, fianchettoed mine, uh, and then push pawn, castle, and just kind of go. Um, but I was like, oh, that's a different way of getting to sort of the same pawn structures that I'm used to now. Um, so here I am thinking he's probably going to be less familiar with that. I have no idea what this sort of defense is. Apparently this text over on the side calls it the Pierce or the Perk. I don't know which way it is. Um, I thought it was Slav, but I guess that depends on what his move too is. Anyway, uh, so I went with something I am completely unfamiliar with and I don't normally play. Uh, and I, why am I moving these? I have, there, there we go. I went B3 and all of a sudden everything from the text is immediately gone. Nobody plays this shit, because it's probably not real and it's probably terrible. Um, 
but I figured if, if I get him out of prep, that's better than me being out of prep on move two. I don't know. Uh, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll kind of see and maybe it gets to transpose. So yeah, he follows up and uh, I'm just going to develop normally. He now Fianchetto's his other guy, which I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I mean by Fianchetto's his other guy. That's a really weird thing to say. Um, I'm just going to keep developing normally. He doesn't have a horse here yet, so I don't want to bring my bishop out here for nothing. Um, so my thoughts, I could either develop my horse first. Um, I ha I'm hesitating to go knight f3 because I do like to push f4 if I can. Um, so I'm thinking I'll probably go my knight first and maybe I'll get to decide one of these two squares for my bishop after that. Um, he goes bishop, so I kind of don't really have a ton of choice. I'm not going to place it here when I'm not pinning anything and just get hit by a pawn. So um, develop to a standard position. I'm already guarding this. I'll be able to guard it even more. And at least now this is something very similar to what I play like against a Sicilian. I get this basic sort of setup. Um, and then depending on what he does on this side, I'll develop my knight to one of these two, uh, push f4. I could castle either direction depending on how things look. So I'm, I feel much more much more confident now, much more familiar. Um, at least like I'm, I'm used to this sort of setup a lot more than how it looked on move one. So he develops over. I just solidify my center in there. Um, and now he finally decides to push. He decides to finally play a little bit of attack. And uh, some quick math, I've got three pieces attacking that pawn, and he has three pieces defending the pawn. So it's just going to be a big equal bloodbath if I take, but also I've blocked my bishop in. There's not a lot else I can do. If I go here, I'm just going to get pushed. So I also don't have a choice. Um, so I'm just going to take, and then he takes with the bishop, which really surprises me. Um, to invest the extra move to Fianchetto it over here, attack my weakened king side. Well, weakened because I don't have a bishop here anymore. Uh, he's blocked off from defending on that side. Um, you know, potentially I get my pieces doubled if he wanted to um, make that trade. I'm, I'm surprised that he led with bishop first. So uh, that'll allow me to take with my knight, which will free up on an undefended pawn. And then I still have my bishop, which I can potentially expose this now open diagonal with of my own. So um, I don't think that this was the right piece to take, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe uh, maybe he's afraid of using the knight and freeing up squares for my queen. I don't know, I don't know. If, if he did use his knight, I probably don't take, I probably just sit and develop a piece and then wait for him to take. Uh, so that way I get extra time and make him use all the tempo. So if he did take with knight, I probably don't take, but I'm not exactly sure. So either way, I think knight here for me is the right decision. Um, it now opens this up. And uh, now I've got the bishop pair for however long I'll be able to keep that. So I think that's pretty neat. He takes, and this is certainly open for me. Um, there's, I don't think there's any real reason to make this trade. That just seems bad. Um, but I didn't want to take it yet because I was concerned that if he pins my bishop, like, yeah, sure, I can unpin it with one of these two moves. I don't know exactly what. Um, and then he can come after it. And maybe it's kind of awkward where I have to put it. I'm not exactly sure what I do. I don't I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable yet making all these potential sorts of trades. Um, so I thought I would improve my position a little bit first. I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Um, but maybe in hindsight, I should have just taken it while I could. Um, but I did not. I... Uh, I decided to put a little bit of extra pressure. Um, so now his knight is attacked twice, which is better than a free pawn, right? I, maybe um, it forces him to have to do something about it to protect it, to which he only really has one move. Um, he can't move over this way because then I'm just going to take his piece. So his piece, his pawn. Uh, so I felt that this was better because that way I get to develop a little bit. I still have this attack. It's going to make his structure a little bad and block his knight in a little bit. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have anyway because it would have been easier for me to try and take advantage of this diagonal if this pawn wasn't here. But either way, I, I don't think that this was bad. Um, he defends it the only way he can. And uh, now I've got a little bit of time. I could either develop my knight now 
or I could take this pawn now, or I could even queenside castle. So all three of those I think are relatively equal options. Um, I thought if I castle first, that'll give me the best chance for, you know, just activity and development. And, you know, if I castle and he pushes down, I could actually pin it to his king so he couldn't take my queen. Um, and then I just take extra, take the extra file, the open file, extra. Extra, it's the only one. Take the open file that way. Um, you know, have have other pawns already defending it. I feel like I'm probably going to win this. So I, I, I ended up queenside castling, um, which maybe... Maybe wasn't the best of the plays. Maybe I should have just taken it. Um, I think part of it is there's so many times in games where you see people have the chance to win material, but instead good players will just use the tempo to make extra forcing moves. And now you're attacking two things and then they defend it. And now they make another forcing move and now they're attacking two things. And they sort of keep the pressure and stay on offense and get extra development and just get crushing positions. Um, as opposed to just chase one pawn and then I'll have to backtrack my bishop or, or something like that. You know, he develops the knight out here and then I run my bishop away. And so I waste some time, he gets development and I gain the pawn. Like, does that matter? I don't know. So I, uh, I wanted to make those plays instead. So I queenside castle and now he goes after my bishop. He doesn't like the fact that I've got a little bit of, you know, connectivity going on between my pieces. But it does drop a pawn, because now it forces me to take here, and uh, he can take one of these two ways, and I'm definitely going to win out at some point with one of these. You know, there's, there's only so much he can do. So I have to take, he decides to take with queen, offering the queen trade. So if trade, if trade, then I get this pawn. Um, I could also potentially not queen trade and try and use him taking my piece. Um, and let me get the tempo advantage, uh, to which my tempo would probably be just attack this pawn. Um, so I was a little torn between those two moves, because uh, if I push over, you know, does he does he leave the tension there? Excuse me, does he leave the tension there? Does he just solidify his pawn central pawn structure? Um, and I felt that maybe he does solidify it, and I no longer have my light squared bishop. Um, but you know, maybe. Maybe I should have done it. I don't know. Uh, I ended up taking the trade myself. He takes, and now I take the free pawn final. So it took me a while, a few extra turns, but instead of taking it initially and then him developing his horse and me running back, I was able to castle, uh, give him an isolated pawn, and, uh, you know, a little bit of extra space and things in my advantage. So I think I, I think I worked out okay. I think I did all right. Um, he puts me in check, which I wasn't very concerned about. Generally, when you queenside castle, you like moving the king over one extra square anyway. Uh, when you kingside castle, your king is touching all three of these pawns, and he's nice and safe. When you queenside castle, there's an extra little space down here where pieces can come in and attack you. So it's pretty normal to move over that one extra spot um, and just whatever. So I didn't think anything of it. I'll move over this way. Maybe eventually, I mean, it does actually leave this pawn open as well for the moment you know maybe I just trade off these bishops maybe I don't um, but I wasn't really concerned I didn't give any consideration to moving this way um, I don't know if I should have I'm certainly thinking about it now um, as uh, you know obviously like like I mentioned earlier he fianchettoed his bishop and then immediately got rid of it so it's a little bit of a weakness would I want to make this trade even if I have it be a possibility I'm not so sure um, so, you know, I, I'm certainly curious to see what the computer would say about going to d2 instead of to b1, because uh, then my king is definitely stuck. Um, he wouldn't be able to move to either of these two squares, um, and my, I wouldn't be able to, like, really go after his bishop either. You know, I'd have to push here to then push there, uh, and then go around, and then go around. So it, it would take me... It'd be really hard. I would never be able to get at this bishop otherwise, outside of going back to trade. Um, and I think that's kind of why I might consider now, because there's all, that's the only thing I can do, is either take a million turns to go after it, or it just stays there for the rest of the game. Um, granted, maybe I'm safe enough where it doesn't matter that it stays there the rest of the game if it's not doing anything, but, you know, we'll see. So that is one thing I'm curious about. Should I have gone to D2? I'm not sure. Uh, but I go to B1, he castles, 
So I've got a good position in my opinion overall. Um, things feel pretty safe, pretty solid. Um, I should probably, you know, develop my knight. The problem is which square. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit ago, I usually develop my knight to, uh, to these squares so that I can push f4. But those are totally different situations. That's when I still have a queen over here. That's when I still have a couple minor pieces and there's stuff going on in the middle. It's not so open. Um, but it's just a little bit of a habit. I don't want to block my pawn in if I develop my knight over. But it's just it's just not the same. It's not the same when you do it early on because he's already castled and has a nice open line that I completely didn't see. Um, so I castled knight, to, not knight, castled knight to e2, Jesus. So I moved my knight to e2 and he immediately capitalized on my mistake. And I was like, oh shit. I was a pawn up, I had solid position, I was in decent shape and uh, yeah, made a, made a big little problem there. So obviously this guy's undefended, this guy's undefended. He's attacking both of them essentially. If I try to block my or guard my bishop so that he can't take it, well, then he'll just push it away. And now what do I do? I mean, maybe I still should have done that. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I could obviously still take his knight from here, potentially. Um, but what if I block away and then he attacks my bishop in this way? And it's two pieces attacking me. Do I, do I defend it again? Okay, but then he goes after. Now it's three pieces attacking me. And I've blocked my bishop in. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a problem. So I, I don't think I really have a way out. Uh, obviously, there's nowhere my knight can go that could defend my bishop. And I can't just go back here because then he takes my knight. And I mean, no, he would take my bishop first is what he would do. I get to save one of them. I could either save the knight, but then he moves the... I, I can't. Like, it's... I'm kind of screwed. So... I end up just taking his knight straight up because uh, I feel like the only way for me to save a piece is to just trade and then it's one for one. If he takes the bishop, I move the knight. If he takes the uh, if he takes the knight, I can bring my bishop back and defend here. And then it's not, you know, totally lost or anything. So that's what I did. I defended this guy. So it ended up, it's just, it's just a trade. Maybe it wasn't that bad. It definitely screwed up my position. Putting my knight on e2, it definitely was a mistake, but it might have not been that bad. I'm still a pawn ahead. He still has isolated and a weak pawn. Um, my structure is still solid. All my are mine are all, all connected. His bishop's not doing a ton. He is kind of blocking off this square from my rook, so it's going to become a ton really soon. Um, yeah, I'm blocking myself a little bit, but I'm a pawn up and this guy is weak, so I still think it's okay. Um, but I didn't, uh, I didn't realize how much of a weakness C2 was at this point. Um, and there's really nothing I can do about it. So this, this pawn I am ahead, it's, it's going to have to go away because, you know, again, I can't bring my knight down here to defend. And you know what? If my king would have been on C2 this whole time, defending the knight over there, that also would not have been a problem. Um, so... In hindsight, I think bringing my king to c2 would have been a lot better than b1, but uh, I didn't. So here we are. Um, I can either let him get two rooks on my seventh rank right in my face and there's nothing I can do about it, and then I'll proceed to lose the game. So that's not a good idea. The only really thing that I feel like I can do is just straight pushing it. You know, he'll win the pawn trades over here. I'm going to lose my pawns of, of defense. It's going to it's gonna be bad. Um, this position is probably like minus three at this point for me. I, I don't know. It's probably pretty awful. Just from one little bad move. Maybe two, maybe two bad moves, but one little bad move. So I push pawn. He takes. I thought he would take the other way personally, but it's fine. Obviously, you know, the one rule of thumb is take toward the center, which he's doing. But you also want to take toward the enemy king. Um, but, you know, plus it gets it off of this line as opposed to it still is, I, I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter in hindsight, but I guess I would have thought, so I'm curious to see what the computer says is the better pawn in this case. Um, but either way, it's not really that important. So uh, I am going to take back with mine to keep my, uh, I wonder, is there any world where this is the better one? I don't think so. I don't think it actually matters, does it? 
I can't imagine it matters for me. I mean, he'd be able to put me in check. I just go here. I, I don't I don't know. Does he just immediately come down and then I lose the game? Actually, that probably... No, I'm covering this square. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wonder if maybe this was the right play for a cheeky little trap. He wouldn't have fallen for it. It's not like that would actually have worked, but... You know, online chess, blitz games, shit like that works. But that's fake chess. So, anyway, uh, I took with uh, D-pawn. He takes with C-pawn. And here I'm still thinking I I'm not going to be able to deal with the pressure of both of these rooks oops, attacking me from, you know, two sides. And this bishop is really just covering down my squares. And I can't, I can't move my king to get away from it. Um, I can't bring my rook into defense. Yeah, I'm sure maybe I can trade a rook and then he goes there and, and then what do I do? Like, I don't know. I just felt like even if I do trade these pieces and he gets both of his rooks coming down on me, even if material wise, it's not that bad. I just feel like positionally I'm, I'm so screwed if I tried to play that way. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should have really just taken, let him come on in, let him check. I'm not sure. But, uh, I decided that I needed to get rid of this thing. And I it's I think it's too strong at this point. Um, so I'm thinking I have to sack the exchange. He'll take, I take, and then, you know, maybe he's an idiot and he takes the pawn and I win the game. It's not gonna happen, but you know, maybe it would at least pin this pawn. Um, and then I could try and find a way to maybe slowly collect it, but I can't I can't move my king to get up here, unfortunately. So um, my bishop is kind of blocking in my other pawns, and he's occupied to the defense of this square. So I'm definitely in a world of hurt, but I, I elect to offer in the exchange, sack the exchange. Um, I just, I didn't feel good taking the pawn. I felt like it would have opened up my position, made me way too defenseless. I don't think that there would have been much I could do, have done. Uh, maybe there is. I would love if, if it's there. I would certainly love to see it. So I can't wait to get to that point when we get there. But we'll see. So uh, he does take the... I mean, maybe he didn't even take... You know, maybe there's a world in which he takes this pawn first. Maybe there's a world in which he moves back to defend here. You know, maybe he puts me in check first. It, you know, I don't know. Maybe he thinks this bishop is stronger than my rook and doesn't care. But no. Unlike me leaving free pawns, he doesn't take or he doesn't leave free material there. So I take back. He pushes for the flight square. Um, so here we go. Here's kind of the beginning of the end game, in my opinion. I've made at least one mistake, maybe two mistakes, depending on that king move. And uh, I've had to sack an exchange. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm down a little bit of material. So I know that when you're down, obviously, you don't really want to trade because that's just going to make it harder and harder and harder for me to come back if I just have no pieces left. But is it really a... I mean, obviously, yes, it still is a trade, but it's a trade where I could at least gain a pawn for it. So I'm, I'm getting some of the lead back. I do lose my only rook. So then, you know, it, it's pawn and bishop to single rook as opposed to whatever this is. Um, and I'm not really sure if I could save it that reliably anyway. I, I would have to push... And, and, and then what, you know? Obviously he can come over, I can push again. But at some point this pawn's gonna come, at some point he's got two rooks and I just don't. Um, so I just, I didn't feel comfortable or confident that I could make this trade um, with my pawn first. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't wanna allow him to get both of his rooks down here on my seventh file. I just don't think that that is a winning solution for me. So I elected to, uh, win this pawn it'll give me a pass pawn and maybe pass pawn plus bishop will be enough unfortunately it's a dark square bishop on a light square pawn promotion square um so it, it doesn't match but uh honestly since the since i skewered myself i didn't really feel like i had good chances to win well i got out of it okay but you know especially now at this point i don't really feel like my chance to win is very good so giving myself some sort of imbalance with a passed pawn to me made a lot of sense. Um, I'm not good playing from behind. I'm not really good with tactics. So having some sort of imbalance where I have a direct threat that can win the game 
felt like something I could build on. So I uh, took it the rook, he takes, I win the pawn, he goes after it, I push it, and now it's on a dark square. So now I can keep it safe while I slowly improve my position, try and find ways to inhibit his rook from causing too much damage. Um, I might have to drop a couple of these guys down here, but I'm three squares away from getting a queen and winning the game. So, you know, we'll see. There's a, there's a good fight to be had. He puts me in check, um, and I think this was an amazing move. It's trying to get me over here, to which then he gets to put me in check and take it for free. So my only option is going into the corner. Um, so I'm glad that I caught that. I think that was a great move from him as opposed to just going directly for the pawn. Throw in the check first. Uh, and now he goes directly for the pawn. But now I've got the time to save it because this was no longer check. So great move on his part. Um, it's now got some defense. And now I can start working on getting my king out here. You know, if he goes after these pawns again... Um, I'm gonna have to lose some of it, you know. I Maybe I push this one and then lose this guy. I don't know which one I would necessarily be the most important pawn to lose or the least important. So I, I still have to kind of figure that out, but he, he, he pushes his pawn instead. Um, you know, and maybe he didn't want to take the risk of grabbing these pawns, letting my king back into the game, and then my pawn gets to fly and he can't stop it. So maybe he didn't feel that this was safe. So, you know, perhaps I perhaps I really am in defense at the moment. Um, but he also does need a square to get his king over to this side too. So uh, I get my king over, he gets his king over, I get my king over, his rook has to go. And uh, I don't know if he's still trying to go here or still trying to go here and deal with the pawn. But obviously this pawn is how I'm going to win the game if I win the game. And... Uh, you know, if he spends a bunch of time gobbling these up like Pac-Man, that's three turns I can use to hopefully promote into another lady. So uh, I just push, and if I have to push again, well, then I can have these two guys defend themselves while I get my king up there and, and do that. I don't know if this is correct. I don't know if that's the right time, but my king is cut off, so it feels okay. You know, maybe I... Maybe I push this guy, but I also kind of feel like if we get into a locked up position where my pawn is here and I'm defending it and you can't take any of my shit and the pawns are all kind of stuck, you know, maybe forcing him to waste more time pushing pawns as opposed to, you know, give me some time where I can waste time pushing pawns. I don't know. It's just, I thought I might need tempo later. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, so I pushed. He goes back to defend. He obviously doesn't want me to promote. I get my king closer. He gets his king closer. And uh, here, when I was inputting the moves on the side, here I realized, which I did not realize in the game, I'm actually covering both of these squares. So his king is still blocked off. Um, and I'm covering these squares with these pieces. So his king is still blocked off. Maybe I shouldn't have moved this pawn anymore. Maybe I should have just brought my king up. So my king is defending both of these. You know, give my bishop some freedom. Maybe I can, you know, eventually work my way around into one of these squares and go after his pawns. Maybe that gives me time to... I don't know. I don't know. But it's something I didn't notice the first time that I do notice now that I was... Uh you know, setting the moves up on the board, that his king is kind of stuck. Um, so, yeah, I bring my king closer. He brings his rook closer to stop me from being able to queen. Um, and then I push the pawn, because I was like, I want to get as close as possible. And I think this may have been, may have been a critical mistake. Uh, obviously, it now opens up this square. I am no longer defending it. And he immediately takes it. Um, I can't get over here. At least I can't get over here yet because he's attacking my bishop. So maybe I should have moved my bishop over and then tried to work my king over this way. Um, I also kind of wanted to cut off his king from over here, thinking that if I just stay here and I don't move these pieces, he can't really take these pieces. If he, if he wants to make the trade of rook for these guys, then it's four to four in pawns. My king would have better position with opposition. 
you know, maybe I can win that game or, or anything. Uh, at this point, I don't know if it was on this move when he did that, or if it was on this move when I did this. On one of these two moves, I heard him mutter under his breath, I think this is a draw. I don't know if that was him attempting to offer a draw, or if that was him just talking to himself, but he said under his breath, I think this is a draw. And honestly, I feel like I'm probably still losing, but I definitely think that I have a chance. Um, you know, one small mistake, one slip up, and I can potentially queen. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe he tries to to chase my king away or stop something with my king because it's like, okay, well, my king is guarding this square. So maybe he tries to move the rook somewhere and starts to hunt. And then if he starts to hunt, you know, maybe then I can hunt down his pawns and maybe he makes a mistake by bringing his, his rook away and maybe I get to, I don't know, something. Um, and I, did, I, don't, I didn't go to a chess tournament for the first time in 17 years to, to make a draw in my first game. Um, I did check out players' ratings prior to the tournament. Uh, I was matched against the third highest player in the in the setting, or not the setting, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, in the section, that's, that's the right. He, he was the third highest rated player in the section. Uh, unfortunately, I had to play him first. Um, like, I, di I didn't come here to force draws though. I always used to say that like, I, I hate draw, I would rather lose than draw, because with a, with a draw, you just feel like every decision you made, if you, if you did one thing different, like, that could have been the difference to win the game. Like any of your tiny mistakes caused you to draw, where maybe if you fixed one of your numerous mistakes, you would have won. And that feels worse than like, you know what? I went for it. I tried to win. I did my best. I have no regrets. You know, like the trainers on the Nugget Bridge say. Um, so even though he said it under his breath, maybe I could have offered it one to him, but it never really crossed my mind that I wanted to, even though I feel like my odds to win this game are probably not good. Um, so anyway, that was that. I, uh, I didn't say anything about it, but I also don't really know what I do now. Um, so I know that I, I do need to get my bishop down here somewhere else, so that way I can bring my king over to here maybe when this pawn pushes... It wouldn't even push his rook away because he's, you know, guarding it, but... It would completely lock up the board if so, um, unless I, you know, capture this pawn, bring my king back, and now this is a potential victory as well. Um, so, like, I feel like I have solid chances, um, but I don't really know what's the best way to go about that. What do I have to do first? Do I push my pawn first and see what he does? Do I bring my bishop back? Um, and then he goes all the way up. I feel like usually in these types of sitting situations, you want to just push one square at a time. I could be wrong. I, you know, I, I don't know end games very well, obviously, because we're, we're not good players. Um, but I feel like one square at a time is probably what you want to do because it gives you more turns of tempo to prevent you from getting in Zug's way. You know, if, if the board was totally locked up and he was forced to move his king away somewhere and that, you know, vacates a square for me to capitalize on it and then all of a sudden maybe I can win um, so it just gives you more options but uh, he moved all the way up I did I just moved one because I I just moved one I, I wanted this maybe I should have moved this one first so my bishop had somewhere else to go I don't know I don't think it really mattered um, t my time is certainly also getting a little bit low now so I can't really try and spend a half hour figuring out what would stockfish say is best here um, so I just pushed this little guy one square and whatever. I didn't think too hard. Now he's pushing one square. I'm pushing one square. He's pushing one square. I'm pushing one square. But I think this one was a mistake. Um, you know, obviously my thought was, you know, if he takes, then I take. And I've got a nice little, you know, sort of chain going on here. And then I would be able to push up two squares and everything would be guarded. And then he wouldn't be able to even steal any of these little pieces down here with his rook if he tried. So... I think that was my thought, but uh, he's guarding this square, and uh, he doesn't have to take. So it's tough when you have the only bishop in the game. Um, if my pawns are on dark squares, I can defend my pawns, but that means his pawns are on light squares and I can't take them. So kind of kind of is rough. So once he pushes up there, I'm in a little bit of a problem. My bishop then becomes stuck. Uh, at least, thankfully, he pushed this guy, so now 
he vacated that square but i still can't get here so my bishop still needs you know somewhere to go safely while my king gets over to the side and i no longer have that square because i just took it away from myself um so yeah he pushes and because of all of what i just said i was like i need this square back so i give myself a little bit of a weakness but it also at least it stops his king from going over to this side if he so chose it gives me a chance to bring my king here um and then maybe i can run this guy over run this guy over and at least he's still blocked off if i move my king so you know maybe there's maybe there's something for it maybe it's okay but i needed the square back um and now here we go maybe now he's trying to get in trying to win all this stuff i'm not exactly sure um i don't know what my best play is to try and capitalize on this obviously i can't just push um I don't know, like, is now the time where I go after that lone pawn? Should I be pushing pawns? I'm not 100% sure what I should be doing. I still feel like I need to get my bishop away. You know, at least now, you know, if he does go down there, maybe I have a chance to come in and start taking these pawns. But if he takes these pawns first, it might not matter. Anyway, so there's a million thoughts going through my mind. Um, and I decide I'm going to go with my king first. Uh, try and get this guy and uh, he brings his rook down he's going to go pawn hunting and I realize I can't let him take the a2 pawn because if he takes there then my king can't take this one so you know if he goes then there's no point in me getting my king over here he he then can just push this guy down where I won't be able to chase him because my bishop would be in trouble eventually move his rook out of the way and then his pawn wins the game so I need to have this pawn still be around. Uh, so I push it. I still, I only pushed it once because um, I wanted it to be on a dark square. Maybe I should have pushed it twice so that it was closer. I don't know. It probably doesn't really matter, but I wanted it to be on a dark square so I could defend it. Um, it's, it's a secondary win condition if I ever get to capture this pawn. So, you know, he devours that guy. I move this bishop so that now I, my king is now free to go after here. Um, and then he uh, he claims this square for his own. So with me having the wrong colored bishop, I can never take this king. Or never take the king. I can never get this pawn over here unless... I mean, I just can't. The only way I can do that now is if a different pawn happens to get all the way up there. Um, obviously, my king can't push him away. The pawn can't push him away. There's no other connected pawns. So... His king doesn't have to move the rest of the game, and this is not really a win condition anymore. So now my thoughts are, do I try and win this pawn? Do I try and win this pawn? And then have one of these guys go? This one's at least on a dark square. Um, so I, I kind of need to figure out how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna make that happen. Um, but I decided, wait, what? Why is there a arrow all of a sudden? I don't know, um, but at least now, I can, you know, make some progress. I go over here, whatever. He goes over there, that's fine. Uh, time is also very low at this point, so it's too hard to think of anything too concretely. Um, but I think I can, I think I'm free to take this pawn. Wait, what? Where's the rest of my moves? Oh, that's, that's really weird. Somehow it went in the variation as opposed to the continuation. Anyway, so uh, he goes after this pawn. I can still defend it. But maybe he can now go after my bishop and cause me some problems. But he doesn't. He decides to go after the bishop instead. Uh, to which... Now, I thought this was actually really good. Now I still get to defend this pawn. Um, and now I get to go after this guy. Maybe it's a fair trade. Since this pawn can no longer promote, maybe now he's thinking to go here, I take, he takes. That's definitely a big advantage for me. Because this pawn's value has gone down the drain, but this pawn's value would go through the roof. So, you know, maybe that's a thought that he has. It, it would work out in my favor, I think. But no, now he's targeting after these two guys. And uh, one of them has to fall. But this one's still guarded, and I think this guy is more important for now. But also, once this gets captured, he's got two connected past pawns. I can't stop them both, but maybe I could stop them sort of you know if he if he does if you know if i take here he takes here 
that would give me tempo to come down. I, I don't I don't know, man. Um, I, I think I, I could probably sacrifice my bishop for one of these pawns, and then maybe this guy can run. Maybe this guy can run. It's tough. It's really close. Um, so I take because I take the really. I thought I took over here. Huh. Maybe I figured this pawn was more valuable because he's on the dark square and he's three squares away. Allowing him to take here. Maybe, you know, maybe I also thought this pawn looks juicier and I'm trying to take here, which then I could save this pawn, which is really good for me. I, I feel like these two pawns are more dangerous than this one. So maybe this kind of baits him into taking that side. I don't know, I actually, I legitimately, I forgot. I thought I took this guy. Um, but no, yeah, he takes over there. So you're telling me there's a chance. And now I can defend both of my pawns and my bishop is nice and safe. Um, he goes after this guy. I can defend all three pawns. I'm so powerful. And then you know what? I don't even need, maybe, maybe I didn't even need to defend it. Maybe I could have gone there and just blocked it off. And that probably was the play, but the, the sight of seeing of me defending three different pawns just looked so damn cool. I don't, I don't know if I ever even thought that I could just go here. I don't know if it ever crossed my mind. Um, I don't know, part of me also thinks, man, I don't know. This makes it one square closer to queening. Can I capitalize on that? I'm not sure. There's a lot to think about, but that allowed him to make an absolutely great move. He totally set a trap and I took it hook, line, and sinker. I thought, hey, here's a chance to finally take this pawn. I can't let it go. Like I have to actually capture it. Maybe I just capture it later. I'm not sure, but I couldn't let it go. So obviously now in hindsight, if I would have blocked the rook's sight, this would have been much better. But if you were, you know, still following, holy crap, 42 minutes? I'm sorry, I thought these would be like 20. I legit, I thought these would be like 20 minutes. Um, obviously now you guys can probably see exactly what happens. He pins me and uh, I'm fortunately, I'm not fast enough to get the queen anyway. Um, I can push my pawn. He takes bishop with check to which then I have to move and then he can go back with his rook before I get to queen. So if I had one more tempo, or if I had blocked the sight to that pawn, I would have been able to safely take this one, safely push this one. Um, so man, I, I feel like I played well. Uh, obviously I, I had one big issue with uh, getting myself pinned. I'm not upset that I sacrificed the exchange and gave myself this pass pawn. I think I played the end game better overall with my pawns and his pawns. Like, I don't think he should have given my king this square by moving his at all. Uh, I don't think he made the best pawn pushes with these. Yeah, I've made a couple bad ones myself, um, but I think I played the end game slightly better uh, until he set this brilliant trap that I, I could have prevented. Could have prevented, but I didn't. Um, so, he takes, I push, he goes back, and uh, at this point, I resign. So, uh, I start off 0-1, which sucks, because uh, now I'm going to play somebody else who is 0-1. So, if I eventually get back and win all the rest of my games and go to tie breaks, for whatever, you know, my tiebreakers won't be as good. Losing the first game is, is really bad for tie breaks. Um, it just, just kind of is with the way it all works, but... Uh, you know what? It's one game. There's five rounds. I can still do all right. I knew this guy was one of the better players in the section. Uh, it's unlucky I fought him first. I got white pieces against him. Played a really weird opening. I was out of prep on move two, but uh, it happens. I, I'm not upset with the way I played. I'm just, a, I'm, I'm sad that I couldn't pull it out because I, I think I had a couple other ways to do so. So let's, uh, let's turn the engine on, go all the way back. And let's see what the computer thinks now. So, man, I can't believe this took 45 minutes. I'm sorry, guys, because now it's going to be another 15 of looking at what the computer says. But either way, so he plays perk. And uh, 
yeah, you know, I, I didn't want to try my Vienna stuff in something I've never played before. I just feel like that'd be a big advantage for him. So immediately I make a bad move, but you know what? Who? Nope, nobody does shit like this, so he's not going to know what's going on either. Wow, yeah, the computer wants the Slav. Interesting. So look, see, now I'm winning. Again. This is stupid. You can't pay attention to this anyway, but um, it's all fine and dandy. We're going to be, it's going to be equal in the opening. No big deal. Um, none of these moves are really all that significant. They're just standard sort of whatever moves. Nothing major, to th unless something jumps out like a huge difference. Like, oh, hold on. What, 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 what could happen here? Um, clearly, the computer wants me to have pushed d5. Uh, take away strength from his center. And get to activate my queen you know okay so in hindsight the fact that it's recommending this every single move d5 d5 d or sorry d4 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 okay clearly i should have played d4 but other than that like i'm not terribly upset um still wants me to do d4 but things aren't the worst you know see here now i think it's fine having d3 just to solidify everything down so my knight is now no longer forced to defend that guy. You know, my knight can do stuff if I wanted, but it's fine. I did block my bishop in, so if he wanted to push here and then push here to trap my bishop, he could, but if he pushed there, I would just go here and offer the trade. So, uh, and now he pushes, which I thought was advantageous to me. I didn't think it was the greatest of pushes. Um, computer seems to favor me a little bit on it, Wow, it wants me to take with my knight first? Interesting, why? You want the knight to take, knight to take, and then bring the queen out and just leave his knight sitting there? That's so strange to me. Computers are so aggressive. Like, I would never walk myself into... Huh, interesting. And like, there's not really a threat here either because, I mean, I guess the threat is I'm attacking the knight with a pawn and my bishop is then targeting. I mean, yeah, I, I guess. How, how did it get defended then? He messed up my castling. Did he just, he just accepts it? You don't take with the pawn? I guess because it forces the pressure yeah, and then you just take the bishop with the pawn instead. I would have rather kept my bishop there, though. I think I would have rather taken with the pawn, and then I could have just pushed the pawn. Personally, if I, yeah, if I did something like this, right? Instead of there. If I took with pawn, I guess he gets the castle, but that's still okay, I think, right? I don't know. I get to develop my knight and I probably should go after his dark square. But either way, it doesn't matter. I didn't do any of that stuff. So I took a pawn. Uh, he takes. Ah, don't tell me I'm plus four. No. I mean, I, I knew I was winning. I knew I was leading in the game. Plus four and a half. It wants the knight to develop, huh? Okay, well, it's good to see. I am happy to see that grabbing the pawn is not the best play. I'm surprised it thinks the knight is the best play, though. Thinks the knight is the best play. God, I hate, I hate doing that. Um, but why? I'm so confused. What about this position is plus five for me? It's up one pawn. I've blocked my own rook in. My castling is ruined. Neither one of my rooks can move. I guess it just loves the fact that both bishops are just snipers, but my light square bishop is stuck too. You know, he's just going to eliminate it with b4 at some point. Huh. Man, so what did I do? I mean, still solid. Still solid, right? He defends. You want me to just to push? That's so weird. Why would you want?
I don't know. I don't even know if I want to think about what, what hit. I don't even want to think about it. I just want to look at what I did, not what could have happened. Um, so obviously I took... No, I, I queenside castled. Sorry, I did not take. Which computer doesn't like, but it still says I'm doing good. You know? It still says my position is strong, which I knew it was. I knew I felt confident here. You know, he comes after me. Wow, you want me to give up the... Oh, no. It does, kind of. It does. The computer wants me to give up my bishop? And I know this isn't even about developing the knight. This is just about freeing up the rook. Man, there's no way in hell I'd make a move like that, man. Absolutely not. Take, take... Yeah, so giving myself that extra turn of tempo, forcing him to be the one to make the trade, definitely was better, but I wanted to capitalize on winning the pawn. I certainly still felt that my position was solid, um, you know, especially once I win this pawn, he's going to have to push here, otherwise he can't develop his bishop. You know, I felt, I felt solid. So I take, takes back. I'm still okay. I'm up a pawn officially now. Positionally, the computer hates it a lot more. But, uh, whatever. I'm still okay. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. I could have brought my bishop back. I didn't even think about it. I'm honestly, at the time during the game, I'm honestly not even sure if I saw C2. Because I almost immediately just moved to B1. Because, like, when you queenside castle, like, especially with the Fianchetto open, this is generally a decent square you want to be in anyway. Holy moly. I don't even think I saw this. And, you know, maybe I maybe I was thinking I didn't want to trade because I wanted it offensively. So if I move over, I'm still being offensive. I wasn't alone. Obviously, in hindsight, this bishop caused me severe problems, although this bishop was also the only reason I had a chance to win. Um, but yeah, trading it off. And then I'm just a pawn up. I'm a pawn up, and he's got an isolated pawn that's overextended. I'm a pawn up. Man. Okay. I Clearly, I did not take. I'm surprised it recommends this. Giving up here. And then, yeah, I go back here. Take, take. He takes this, so we just trade the G-pawns. Maybe I wouldn't want that. But I don't know how that's necessarily better for him than just not letting that happen. I guess because if we trade the G-pawns... No, I mean, my, my knight is guarded. He's not taking it. I just need to save the pawn for the turn. Wait one of these squares it's not a big deal i don't know crazy uh so he castled i don't i honestly i don't think that ever crossed my mind to trade his bishop off i mean clearly it didn't because i was thinking only of two horse moves and i was thinking i didn't want to block my f pawn in. oh my god all i had to do was trade it off all i had to do was trade it off wow okay hey this is why you review your vods Computer obviously hates my move. I go from plus two to plus very little. So this was worth me losing two pawns. That's how bad it was. He finds the right move and uh, interesting. So it suggests moving the knight to lose the bishop, but then I get to take a pawn. Oh! God, computers are so good at chess, man. Because now I'm threatening to take the bishop, and I'm also threatening to move my knight to c7, where I would be attacking a rook. And he can't defend c7 with his bishop, because my knight is also attacking d5, or d6. Yeah, d6. Would he be able to... 
So he, yeah, he would have to move his bishop somewhere. I move to c7, and then, yeah, yeah, crazy. I do lose the knight here, though. But I gained a pawn, so I get, it would have been a rook and a pawn for the bishop and the knight. which is an advantage to him. But obviously it hates what I did, which I didn't like it either, but I thought that the equal material was the only solution that I had. So uh, obviously I was wrong, but it's fine. Um, yeah, it says you can save it, but you're better off just jettisoning that pawn and then uh, push this guy, have a solid structure, and uh, try to go from there, I guess. Plus, it's pro it probably wants me to go here so that I can challenge that bishop is probably what it is. Um, yeah, it also would allow me to then put my rook here. So yeah, I would, I would have jettisoned this pawn which I am a pawn up, but this guy is super duper weak. So I'd still kind of be a pawn up in a way. I'd be able to win it back. Oh my God, it's awful. It's awful. I lose the game from trying to save a pawn. Yeah, he, he does what he needs to do. Um, could I really have gone here? I guess I figured if I go after it, he just takes here first, you know? So like, and then, then what do I do? No, he doesn't? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know, man. Tough game. So I push up, which apparently is lethal. He takes, I wonder which one of these pawns he thinks is better. Uh, so the computer hates that one. It says it gives me a fighting chance again. Negative 0.7, negative 0.8. What about this pawn? Same. Maybe marginally worse for some weird reason. No, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, I took as my only move. He took as his best move. Ah, damn, the computer says I could have taken here. I really just didn't see a way for me to, uh... Really just didn't see a way for me to survive if I did that, though. Oh, is it because... I think I forgot. I think I failed to calculate that I had back rank at that point. I thought I would just lose that pawn. And then there would just be two open two openings. I also thought having him come down with check, as we can see over here, would have been too much to bear. But because of the back rank threat, he has to waste a move pushing a pawn first, which then gives me a chance to defend myself. Really? You want me to go after the rook that way? Oh, because it's also attacking the bishop. So it forces a rook off. But then it isolates it and puts it on a light promotion square. Man, I don't understand computer chess. Nobody does. So, damn, it really hated that move, huh? I thought this was legit star, not like a, not amazing, but the fact that I considered it as a possibility that it would pin this guy that it would give me a passed pawn in the future to try and win the game with. I thought all of that was very wise of me. Uh, but he took, I took, yep, he makes his flight square. As the computer decides, is it better to win the pawn or better to make your pawns weak? 
or just to push. Yeah, it looks like it likes pushing the most. But at this point, none of them. Of course, of course, the worst of the three options is the one I picked. Even though it wins a pawn. Whatever, man. So he goes after it. At this point now, I feel like it's probably, there's very few, there's like two or three moments where I want to see kind of what happened. Yeah, I made the best move there. Made the only move there. Made the best move there. Made the best move there. All of these are kind of equal, but get my dude closer. Seems really good. Get my king closer, best move. Get my king closer, guard both my pieces, best move. And now, yeah, I mean, it's a draw position. Um, or it just means both people have an equal chance to win. But yeah, I think moving this pawn was, was really bad. Ah, I lost the game with it. Oh well, so I really did still have chances though. I really did still have chances. That lets him get in there. Yeah, now these are all just random pawn moves and none of them particularly matter that much. I guess I should have doubled up. Wonder why. Because if he took, I would have had to take, and then this guy is kind of fragile. Eh. I keep making things worse for myself. Okay, so that was a bad move. Negative four and a half to negative three and a half. That's not as bad as I would have thought, but it gave me access to that square, which I thought was huge. I thought it was a potential win condition he just gave me. Um, yeah, that was bad though. I, I returned the favor immediately. Why do you want me to go down here first, huh? Guarding these two squares doesn't really mean anything. I guess it doesn't. I move king, whatever. I saved a pawn. Yeah. I'm sure I get back to a winning chance at some point, though, here. I thought I earned that. I'm definitely dead lost at this point, though. Oh no, this didn't happen. Uh, this was me clicking the wrong move. Um, sorry. That's why he thinks it's a variation. I accidentally clicked the wrong move at first. That's where he went. Um, okay. Yeah, I would not have missed. I would not have missed free rook to win the game. Uh, so yeah, so I defend it. He he moves somewhere. It doesn't matter too much. I go up there. He comes after the pawns. I take the trade, which apparently was terrible. Really terrible? It seems wild to me. Maybe because I could have saved this eventually anyway. Maybe, I, maybe because I didn't have to lose it for nothing. But I didn't really want him taking this pawn either. And then running these guys down. Because I'd be, what, one, let's just say two, three, four, five turns, he queens this pawn, and I can't really stop it. But I guess I move my bishop, I trade my bishop for one of them, I run this one, but I'm not going to be able to stop him from taking that either. I can't run it. Maybe during that time? I don't know, dude. Wow, negative 54, and I fought back. I don't even know how you, how do you figure negative 55? What does that even mean? Does that mean two queens to nothing? Three queens to nothing? Like, huh? Oh my god, I didn't even see the fact that he could check me. Or fork me. I didn't even see that. Clearly he didn't see it either, but holy shit. Okay, I take it back, computer. Taking that pawn was terrible. Now I understand. Alright, so he gave me a bunch of chances. Really, you want me to block it off? I felt that I still needed to defend this guy. But, nah, I mean, that does make sense. Just block that off completely. And then, uh, and then what? Is it just Zug Zwang, actually? If I push this guy to a dark square and block this off, 
Do I just bounce my king back to these squares forever? Or maybe I go after this pawn, even if he takes that pawn. I just bounce around forever, maybe? I mean, no, because if it was a draw like that, it would say a draw. But... Um, no, this actually does like pushing the pawn. It does not like me going here. Because, yeah, then I... Then I just lose. He's faster. One, two, three. One, two, three. But his comes with check. And it comes first anyway. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, sometimes when you're reviewing your own game, you miss other things that you didn't miss the first time. Like, I, I probably saw that. I mean, clearly I, I knew that those guys could run. But that just gives him an opportunity. So, okay, I guess that was the best move then, after all. I don't feel as bad. Oh, now I do it, though. Because now I'm one turn closer. Oh, my God, that's so smart. Ah, computer chess is ridiculous. It doesn't work now. Because now if he sacrifices, I'm just too fast. Checkmate at eight, even. Because if he goes, I go. If he goes, I get with check. Holy moly. It's just mate and one. Wow, dude. I wonder if this kid reviewed the game and looked at this. I wonder what he was thinking. He's probably thinking, why did I miss this fork? That's ridiculous. But then I gave, I mean, yeah, I, I, we both, we both missed wins. Absolutely. We both missed a lot of stuff. This eval bar is crazy. Lots of zeros, lots of huge negatives. And then back to positive. Oh man. What a game. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother trying for stalemate because uh, there's no chance. Not because he just pushes there, gets another queen just in case. But yeah, damn, crazy, 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 crazy. Okay, well, I apologize everybody. I did not think it would take me over an hour to review one chess game. I have four more of these to do. Um, they won't all be this long. Uh, this game was tough. This game was certainly my longest game in number of moves, I think. Uh, this is what, move 47? Yeah, move 47, and then I resigned. Um, I don't think any of the others went over 40. So, and they like, you know, hit a situation where, okay, you know the result, you know, in the early 30s, mid 30s probably, and then a few more moves to, to close it out. But um, I did not think it would take this long, I'm sorry. I will try to not do that next time, but uh, oof, what a game. So I did lose. Uh, I'm 0-1 at this tournament so far, but he was a good player. He played well. I played well. We both made a lot of mistakes, um, but I'm, I'm proud of the way that I fought back and gave myself a chance to win. Even though I potentially could have offered a draw and he said he thinks it's a draw, I'm, I'm much happier playing it out, giving myself a chance, and getting something to review, um, to learn. So that's all for now. I'm going to go uh, input the next game and record the next game and do it right away and upload it you know, as soon as I can. So thanks for watching, everybody. If you stayed here for the whole thing, post a comment saying so, because I don't think anybody will. I think everybody's going to have just like clicked through some moves and then left. And I don't blame you. A 60-hour game review is ridiculous. Grandmasters don't take that long, and they'll show you a million lines in the middle of a game. But, uh, craziness. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time. There's four more of these that uh, I will do a better job with, and we'll go from there. 0-1-1, let's, uh, let's make it 4-1, boys. Let's go. Take it easy. Catch you later, everybody. Peace.